Did you know that the original Diablo game was going to be turn-based and be drawn in claymation? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode 158. On my virtual left is Mr. Richard Dobson. How are you doing, Richard? Oh, hello. I'm on the left this week. <laughs> yeah, well, good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Um, thank you very much. And on my virtual right is Mr. Paul Renshaw. How are you doing, Paul? Hello there. I'm glad to see that we've got our sort of respective political position sorted out <laughs> early on. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, we've got liberal lefty Dobbo and then me over here on the right. Although I, I don't know if I want to be associated with being on the right. But anyway, never mind. I'm okay. here. Hi, Gareth. Hello. Lovely to see you. I didn't introduce myself. <laughs> and you, my, Dobbo. my name's Gareth <laughs> Briley. I'm going to be your host. And, and I'm sort of down the middle, maybe. I'm not really down the middle. I'm, I'm swinging. You're, you, I'm you're a pro. We don't want to hear about you swinging. Yeah. We know what you get up to down in London. <laughs> um, Richard, how's your week been? Yeah, good, thank you. I uh, managed to go to the cinema this week. I went to see the new Scream film, Scream 6, um, and was actually really impressed by it. Um, I've got a bit of a a love-hate relationship with the Scream films. Um, Two and three were absolutely awful, but I really liked the first one. Um, And then this... I think when 4 came out, they tried to reboot it, but then it took 10 years between 4 and 5 to get something going. But then it's been two in two years now. So Scream, Scream, not it's not Scream 5, it's just Scream in it. The last one last year and then Scream 6 that came out a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, they've, they've really, really kicked on. Um, these last couple ones have been really good, but I think to get to fully appreciate them, you need to sit through all the previous ones. Right. Uh, it's definitely not a, a, f- a film series you can pick and choose. I mean, you, you can to an extent, but you don't get as much benefit out of them. Um, how it's all connected and, and who Ghostface is this time and everything. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, some of the uh, the set pieces are really good. Like there's one bit um, in, a, in a convenience store in New York. And uh, so for some reason, Ghostface has got a shotgun this time for that period and it's really really tense and you, you're watching it and you're like Phew. don't know what's going to happen next oh, wow. uh, but there is there's some really really tense moments in it and then it's got all the typical scream black humor satirical side to it as well that's still there um but yeah really really impressed with this one. Oh, good screen six um paul have you seen screens um i think i watched the first one okay um, I certainly can't be bothered with having to watch all of them in order to appreciate Scream <laughs> 6, though. No, I'm out. <laughs> I think I've talked about my Scream 2 um, experience on the podcast before, so we won't talk about it again, me in the cinema. Um, but it was very scary. I, d- I don't remember that. No, I think we've done it before. Haven't I, Richard? We talked about it before. We're used to it. I think, think we I have. think well, yeah. I to see the one last year. It rings yeah, a bell. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, we did that. I'm not talking about that. Um, Paul, how's your week been? Um, it's been... One of ups and downs, almost, um, literally. Um, we've been playing in the scissor lift again, yeah. and we discovered that um, me and the fellow that was helping me and four boxes of cable made it too heavy, so it just jammed. Um, now, me being me, and you see, what you, what you have to remember is I'm, I'm turning, I'm going to be 50 tomorrow, but in my head... I'm still 25. <laughs> so I thought, this isn't a problem. What I'll do is I'll just shin down the outside um, and I'll pull the emergency release. That'll get us down. Not a problem. Got about halfway down and realised that, yeah, this this really isn't a very good idea and kind of fell the last 10 feet. <laughs> so, oh, no. um, sort of landed on my back and on my shoulder and put my hand down. So I've bruised all my thumb and, yeah, so... There's a lesson there, kids. If you're stuck in a scissor lift, 
shout somebody else to come and pull the emergency release. Don't try and climb down the outside. This is a health I mean, and this, safety nightmare, this is, isn't it? This, they should be what? doing this, a... this. This is the funniest part because the health and safety guy was stood there talking to us at the time. <laughs> and as I fell and hit the floor, I sort of looked across and he was pretty much on his back with his feet in the air, killing himself laughing. My God. He thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, there you go. These, you go. This is one of Paul's lessons for life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, on, on the positive note, the cabling of the warehouse is now done. We're ready to turn the system on on Saturday, and hopefully everything will work. <laughs> I haven't got faith in this, after I just heard oh, you falling out. Yeah. The health and safety guy talking, <laughs> you've fallen out of a lift. <laughs> I'm not... I think it, I think you're going to lose half of wherever you come from. Well, all the power's well, going to go out. My my cabling is very good. <laughs> okay, my okay. common sense, not so much. <laughs> um, any reports of any blackouts on Saturday? Please come to yeah, the Xbox. Yeah, well, hopefully it won't be from me hitting the floor and blacking out. Anyway, so. <laughs> um, I've got a recommendation this week. I watched lots of good stuff this week, but I'm watching a, a series that appeared on Amazon Prime called Swarm. It just appeared from nowhere. This is, and it's by the very talented Donald Glover, who did the TV series Atlanta, who was a, a brilliant musical artist, did This Is America, and he's done this kind of thing called Swarm, and it's he's co-created it. Um, he's directed the first episode, but not all of them, and it's it's basically a kind of like very dark. Um, it keeps saying it's based on a real story. I'm not sure it is, but I think that's why I think they're playing with you on that. And it's about someone who's obsessed with a pop star, with her best friend, like and the pop stars like Beyonce, that kind of equivalent. It's really like Beyonce, and uh, and after her friend has a mishap, she goes on a revenge spree against all the people who have dissed her online. And it's strange, it's weird, like Donald Glover's stuff is. If you ever watched Atlanta, but brilliant, really good, really enjoyed. I've done about three episodes. Swarm. If you fancy something dark and funny and strange, yeah, there we go. Um, games. Now we've been playing some games this week. Now you two have been playing some interesting ones. So let's let's start with Richard because you were going to talk about this last week, weren't you? Talk about it now. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I think my preview came out last week. Now for this, but I got a chance to give to get Island two for a spin. Um, I, I'm a, a big fan of the first game. And all its flaws. Um, a few friends of mine played through it and, and got had had one of the best co-op gaming experiences I've ever had. Um, so I've got high hopes for this second one, and I was fortunate enough to play through like the first six hours. Um, it's moved from an actual island now to LA, even though I it's still called Dead Island. Um, but it's very much a very similar game to the first one so you're playing as someone that's immune to this zombie virus but that doesn't mean that the zombies can't still kill you because whilst whilst you would be a meal for them um you're not you're immune to the virus but you're not immune to being eaten alive basically that'd be um, an interesting immunity to have <laughs> i don't yeah i feel it'd be weird <laughs> just in different stomachs like, how am I going to get back together here? Yeah, what, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> I like the sound of this game. Go on. <laughs> um, but it's it's very much, again, focused on melee. So the, the first one, they sort of explain how um, you, you're you on an, an, a, an island getaway, so you don't have guns because there's no guns on the island. And it's a similar prospect here. It's not really explained how no one in LA seems to have a gun, no, but you just take it with a pinch of salt. So there's, there's a much more focus on melee than other zombie games. Um, but what they've done here, um, it's called the flesh system. I can't remember what it stands for, but basically you're zombies and anything that you attack is anatomically correct. So if you're hacking away with a sword, a uh, zombie's in a uh, zombie on a, on his, in his stomach. You might expect to see some organs kicking about, or if you've got a blunt melee weapon and you whack in a zombie repeatedly in the head, um, their jaw will like dangle up, dangle, and then if you hit them again, it will fall off fully. Um, and then it's interesting to see you get 
grabbed by one of these zombies that's got no bottom jaw, basically trying to eat you. Um, so it's incredibly visceral and and gory, and perhaps one of the the most gory games that I have ever played. Um, which which all lends itself to looking really good as well. Uh, I always really enjoyed the first Dead Island, having this like idyllic island getaway covered in blood and guts and everything, and and it, and it almost works well again here with all the, uh, you're in Beverly Hills and you've got these luxury houses and stuff, and then there's just walkers and shamblers all, all over the place. It's a really interesting mix. Um, and yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 Is it? Did you enjoy yourself, Richard? For how long did you play a big chunk of it? But yeah, the, the first six hours, the, um, I think... Uh, they reckon the story is about 20 to 25 hours, so I've played like a quarter of it. But you get um, interesting um, boss fights uh, with these things called Apex Variants. And then it's, it's interesting because it's, it's basically like a big playground for you to kill zombies in any way you want. So you've got access to a lot of environmental uh, things as well, such as fire hydrants, and then there's car batteries and stuff to electrify them and everything. And you can just go out and have a lot of fun killing these zombies in quite unique ways. Um, the story's very pulpy uh, with a little bit of black humour, which is the Dead Island hmm. way. Um, but yeah, if, if you if you enjoyed the first one, there's no reason why you wouldn't enjoy this second one. But if you didn't enjoy the first one, I don't think there's anything here to to convince you that this one's any different. And it's co-op, yeah? Yes, I yeah. didn't get a chance to do any co-op, no. but it will be... I think it's down to three players this time, though, oh. as opposed to four players last time. I'm, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that. All right. Okay. Oh, you got good. Paul, are you looking forward to that one? I think you might like that. I, yeah, I did enjoy the first one. Yeah. Um, it, it had issues, but in a, in a weird kind of way, they kind of added to the game. Mm. It was almost like, yeah. you know, when you watch a really rubbish B-movie, and you just think, this is dreadful, but I kind of like it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty much like that. <laughs> great, good. Um, great. I'm, I'm kind of, it's coming out April. Is it April the 22nd, you say? I can't remember. So around then, yeah, yeah, yeah. 21st, 22nd. Um, yeah, I think maybe I'll give it a go later. After a few months, I can have a give it a go. I, did. <laughs> I thought you were going to say after a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that as well. <laughs> Uh, good, thank you, Richard. Look forward to that, and have a look on the site for your preview piece. Um, Paul, you've written a couple of preview pieces on some beta thoughts, haven't you? I have indeed. Tell us about. Um, I've played. I've played a couple of betas this weekend, and uh, was impressed with both of them so much so that I was moved to put finger to keyboard. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, I'll start off with the big one, which was the Diablo Four beta. Um, Luckily, we managed to wangle a code um, and play the closed beta. Um, there is, if you missed it this weekend, there is another one this weekend coming. Um, so anybody who's listening to the podcast and fancies a bit of uh, Diablo 4 action, then get it downloaded and try it, because it is flipping awesome. Um, to say that this was only a beta, it was deeply impressive. Um, the graphics look fantastic. The Diablo gameplay is still the same. You're viewing the action from like an isometric 3D kind of place. But the way it looks and the way it plays, it's just, it was so good. I had such a good time. Even, you know, they show you the cut scenes, the cut scene at the start where you meet the big bad, it's called Lilith. And it's just like very, very, you know, I, 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 at risk of sounding you know, repeating myself, it's it's very impressive. It's just run smoothly. You, the big difference this time was that as you run about the world, you can meet other people. That never used to happen in Diablo. You had to play with people that you knew in Diablo oh, 3. Right, okay. Um, but this time there are people just running around in the open world and you can all gang up and defeat these world events that appear. They even have world bosses like massive creatures that just spawn in and everybody in the area can 
dive in and try and beat them. Um, yeah, it was Diablo 3, but on steroids. And I am very, very excited for the for the full release. Great. And when is that coming out? It's coming out in the summer? It's June. It's either June or oh, July. Right. June, I'm not right. sure which. Yeah. I think it's June, yeah. And it's not a Game Pass thing yet because they don't own Blizzard today yet. So No, I think at the moment there's no news of it being no. on Game Pass. Okay. But once the deal goes through and all the Sony people stop crying, I think it'll be on there soon. <laughs> Good. And what was the other one, Paul? You can do another the one. The other one that I played was uh, Exo Primal, which is a game I've spoken about before on here that I was quite excited about. It's basically well, the opening line of my uh, sort of preview that I wrote was imagine if Anthem and Dino Crisis met, fell in love and had a beautiful baby. <laughs> and that's what this game is. Um, basically, it's from Capcom and it takes the exosuits from Anthem and the dinosaurs from Dino Crisis and thinks, what would happen if we put these two things together? And it again, it was... It was quite a restricted beta. You were only allowed to do the um, the sort of survival mode, which was played out over five rounds. Right. You had four rounds of just fighting dinosaurs. And then in the fifth round, everybody was put in one big arena. So there were dinosaurs, but there were also enemy players. Uh -huh. And then you could have like a PvPVE kind of situation. Um, and again, it was very impressive. I particularly like the feature that halfway through the round, you could think this suit isn't really working for me and you could change it and choose a different one and it would be sent to you and you can get in the in a different suit. So if you notice that your team doesn't have a tank, say, there are three classes of the, the suits. There's support, tank and assault. Um, so if you notice that you hadn't got a tank, you could get a tank suit sent to you and go and stand on the front lines and take all the aggro. Um, so yeah, it was, it looks fantastic. The dinosaurs are brilliant. The shooting action is, is there already. Um, so when it releases fully with a proper story and everything, I think it's going to be one to watch. I think it will be at least as good as Aliens Fireteam Elite. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I knew that I'd get you going. Is it, that's coming to Game Pass, isn't it? I, mean, I don't know, because it's Capcom. Do they normally I release on Game Pass? Something's coming with dinosaurs in July. To, or maybe I'll make that up. Um, maybe you are. Yeah. Um, good. Okay, well, I look forward to that. Well done. Two things. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about a PlayStation game. Um, and it's going to boil, boil Paul's blood. Um, <laughs> Tichia came out this week. Um, and I think that's how you say it. I'm not so sure. Um, is... A little, and it's come out. If you've got the PlayStation <laughs> thing that you have for the year, um, <laughs> uh, which I accidentally <laughs> forgot to um, cancel, <laughs> so I've got it for another year, which is good. Uh, so um, you get that for free, and that came out. And to cheers, this little kind of like beautiful kind of little adventure um, set in a kind of fictional sort of Polynesian island. I think I might be have got that wrong. Sort of those islands just to the east of Australia, and. Uh, you play Tachia and you're there and you're in this kind of island world and then you're just trotting around doing things. You get a little slingshot. You can, you know, get food, pick things up. And you play the ukulele and the guitar. You do some, it says, has some kind of like um, rhythm kind of music and gameplay elements, which are brilliant. Um, you can pick, play the ukulele. You can, you can do all the chords and just play any song you want if you're at some point um but then it then your father gets kidnapped and then suddenly it becomes like oh i thought this was kind of a realistic not realistic but i thought this was kind of like a just a little wander around an island but actually it's magic's involved and, and robots and all sorts of things so your dad gets kidnapped and then it's about you trying to find your way through this um world it's the, the closest kind of game I probably to play it's almost got a Zelda we feel and I think it has that moment of Zelda when especially the new one when you can kind of just look against the horizon and go I want to go there and you can go there uh, what's over there I can go there so you haven't you haven't got that yet. so it's it's very different from Zelda but it's got that very kind of like look at the, the graphics of it and sort of maybe some of the gameplay as well um, it's really good I'm really enjoying it and I've only done a couple of hours of it I'm really having a good time with it I think the world's great I love playing the ukulele 
So that's really good fun. Uh, <laughs> is that uh, in the game or in real life? In, in real life, I have played. The, I've had to do it for work. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's great fun. Yeah, it's really good fun. And if you've got the, like it's not called Game Pass, what's it called? PS, whatever it's called. Um, if you've got that, you definitely should give it a go. Have you got that, Richard? Uh, no, I've just got the basic one. I think there's three levels in there. Yeah. And I've just got the basic one. Good but idea. I remember seeing this a lot of the showcases and stuff and every time you really liking it so I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying it yeah it's great it's really good um good let's talk back for the second game richard what have you got next uh well i'll stick on playstation then soon as oh, lovely as soon as you did uh, yeah. but i've hang been on, hang playing on. there's an xbox podcast <laughs> well if it came on Xbox, I'd be playing it on there, but it hasn't, okay. so I've been left with no choice. It's on Switch, though, as well. So. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I've been playing quite a bit of Theatre Rhythm Final Bar Line, mm-hmm. which is the Final Fantasy Rhythm action game. Um, so this is the third one in the series, and it's to celebrate 35 years of the Final Fantasy series. And I think there's now nearly 400 songs on 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 the game from the very beginning to right up until uh re- Final Fantasy 7 remake. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the most modern one. And yeah, like you you all know how how much I love Final Fantasy, how much I love the music. Like I've been to see Distant Worlds a few times and mm. everything about it. So this was a day one purchase for me, having lots of fun with it. I've, I've just finished, I've just beat the main boss on it now. So you still, as you're playing the music tracks, you're still fighting enemies uh, based on how how well you time your inputs and everything. Um, and then you get to unlock like another section of songs and you progress through them. And, and the, yeah, I do get some really tricky ones, even on the, the easier difficulties, just get a bit tricky. Uh, and then I've just defeated the final boss. But, um, yeah, I have nowhere. I don't think I've played 100 songs yet because <laughs> I, I'm fairly sure there's a trophy for doing that and I've not got it yet. Um, yeah, I'm just slowly working my way through all my favourites and then going back and playing some of the lesser-known ones. But once you play a song in this career mode, then you've, you've basically got it unlocked. You can play it whenever you want. Um, there's DLC... Uh, one of the one of the things that did bug me about it though was to have this base list of songs, and then if he wanted some of like the big songs like uh, Zanakin from Final Fantasy X, you had to buy the Day One DLC, mm-hmm. which is a bit annoying. Um, but I say annoying, but then I still did it because I had no mm-hmm. choice. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. It could be NFTs. So <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah loving it uh it's really good fun uh, i love the little chibi style versions of all the final fantasy characters they're very cute and yeah. uh I, yeah it's a no it was a no-brainer for me there you go brilliant so what is the what's the actual gameplay like what do you do you're saying to you've got two different types of stages you've got a battle music stage which is all like you basically a battle music where it's just you've got four lines and notes come on these and you've got to time your inputs with them and then you've got a field music which is all like your world map music and everything else and that's on one track um but it can fluctuate up and down so you need to then move your thumbstick as well to to keep in line with the notes but it is is if you if you remember guitar hero yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was wondering if it was like a guitar here again. Yeah, very, very similar to that. Uh, just the angles changed of which way the notes come from. But then in the background, you've got all your little uh, Final Fantasy chibi characters and the fighting uh, enemies. Um, good. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah, I, I, I'm never going to play that, but it sounds good for Final Fantasy fans. I don't think I can't imagine Paul playing it. Um. Do you know what? I am a Final Fantasy fan and I'm a Guitar Hero fan. Oh, I was wrong. I don't know. It's yeah. just I don't I don't know if that appeals to me, to be honest. Yeah. Um 
I mean, I, I loved. Did you ever play Taiko no Tetsujin when it was released on Game Pass, the Japanese drumming game? <laughs> I played. That I played a was version. Was brilliant. Okay. I loved that one. But anyway, yes. So there we go. It's um, a sentence I never thought I'd hear on this podcast, but there you go. That's good, Paul. Paul, what's your... What's, 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 what's your... It's uh, not all aliens and guns, you know, guys. <laughs> what's your second game? My second game. I've got a choice of two here. Same. I think I'll go... I mean, one of the ones I'm playing at the minute is called Walson Lords of Mayhem, but it's a Diablo clone. So right. I'm going to skip over that one and I'll go to a, a little Rattalika game which surprisingly is actually quite challenging. You know, one of my big bugbears with Rattalika games is that they tend to throw all the achievements at you in the first 10 minutes and then there's no point carrying on. Mm. But this this one is called The Guys and it's about a boy who lives in an orphanage and he finds a mask and when he puts this mask on, it turns him into a monster. And he's then got to try and traverse the world and figure out what to do and how to turn himself back. But then, obviously, as he goes, there are other monsters, so he ends up fighting them and everything else. Um, It's a really pretty game. The graphic style is very simple but very unique. um, It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up, almost, platformer. Um, And... It just looks absolutely beautiful. The design of the creatures and the design of of the monster himself, the monster you play as, is really nice. Um, The bosses are quite large and very challenging. um, And I'm really quite enjoying it so far. So uh, keep an eye out for an upcoming review. Mm. That's The Guys by Rata from Rattalika Games. It does look good. I just looked at the... Yeah, the the graphics are really, really stylish. I really like them. No indie developer as well, which is good. Um, mm-hmm. Great. Um, my second game, my last one, which has got one more to talk about, and um, we can talk about that as well, is um, I've only done a couple of hours of this as well. I'm reviewing it. I only got the review code today. I think it's come out. It's Deceive Inc., um, which is the multiplayer sort of spy game um, that got, I think, it got released today or yesterday. Um, and the idea is that you're a spy. And you have to do a heist, for example, in the in the big sort of map area. And there's a number of tasks that you have to do. So you have to get into certain lock rooms, deactivate certain codes, and then deactivate some more codes, get to a place, get a package, and then get out with your life and then do an extraction. That's basically the gist of everything, but it's all ramped up with what the package is and different ways of getting it. Um, and at the moment, I've played... Um, solo, I think you can play in little teams as well, but solo you've got other spies in there from the online community who are also trying to do the same thing and will kill you <laughs> if they try to <laughs> you're doing to get your thing so, and what, what tools you've got in your kind of repertoire is you can sort of like, like Mission Impossible, you can go up to a guard and you can take their persona without killing them, but you just become a guard you stare at them for long enough or you become a, a civilian or a worker or, or a technician and uh, so you have that but if you start doing things like pulling guns out and stuff you're, they're going to recognise you or, so that will, your cover will go for a short while and then you've got other little things like you've got this great little thing that you can throw on the ground and then it will stand on it and then it will bounce you up in the air you've got guns of course um, you get more kind of weapons and little techniques as you go along um, but what's quite nice about it is that you have no idea where the other people are, but they're in this level. And so I was just playing one little game and I got, eventually had to, it took me ages to get enough sort of credits to get into this um, place where I had to pull a switch. And it took me ages, so you had to get certain amounts of credits to get in there or find a, a key pass, which is quite impossible, you have to search everywhere. And it went on for ages, so it's quite tempting. I've been playing for 50 minutes, I eventually got in there and someone just appeared behind me and shot me in the back of the head. <laughs> right. Um, but there's something, yeah, there's something quite nice about it. I mean, I, I, in the first couple of Assassin's Creed games, in two or three on the three sixty, they used to have a multiplayer section, and it was great. The multiplayer, it was like it had a, it had a kind of basic premise like this, when you could disguise yourself as people, and then you're sort of like 
walking through crowds and you you take out the other people in the multiplayer. It reminds me a little bit of this, completely different, but has a little bit of that kind of like intrigue. How long the servers can... It'll be interesting to see why next week, to see how many people have got it and how long I might be waiting. But everyone might be buying it. It might be very popular, so we'll see. But it's good fun. I'm not really good at these kind of like just multiplayer-only games, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm quite enjoying it. It's a nice little premise. Any questions? My voice gets higher. No. no? Yeah, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. I don't know why my voice has gone so high. Um, now, Richard, you've no, got... No, thanks. No, oh, I'm just going to. I'm just going to say. I mean, Assassin's Creed, the the multiplayer bit, mm. never appealed to me. Mm. I've, I've tried to play it a couple of times, and it was just stupid. It was a stupid idea. <laughs> it's a great um, idea. It's good. Fun. It's a rubbish idea, Gareth. <laughs> um, Assassin's Creed is a story-driven game. Running around and murking other people is not part of the well, was... uh, the PvP. You don't have to shoehorn it into every game. Well, is we, where I stand. Well, we on did it. This. That's what used to happen on the old 360 games. Where everything had to have multiplayer. Mm. But it was not, it was yeah, not and that was ridiculous. And they stopped. Yeah, it. Don't, yeah, don't get me started on that. Oh, anyway. I won't get you. Major <laughs> enemy. Um, I'm just really briefly. So I've been playing Shadow Warrior Three as well. To the advice of that's Neil and you, brilliant. it's really good fun. It's great fun. Um, really enjoying that little smile on the face. Um, Richard, you've got one more go to chat about before we go into news. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm currently halfway through writing the review for this now, but Anno 1800 console edition. Um, so the Anno series, I think, is 25 years old. And, and to celebrate that, they brought it onto home consoles for the first time as a full package as opposed to stripping everything good about it and putting it on the Nintendo DS. Um, but this one... Um, released a few years ago on PC and it's like a real time strategy sim city builder cross. Um I'm having a great time with it. Uh the com- the campaign, the story mode is really in depth, like there's characters and um there's a full story going on. So basically you're returning to your your home after hearing that your father's been imprisoned or- was suspected of treason but then when you arrive home he's he's dead so your uncle takes charge of the family shipping business but then kicks you and your sister off the island so you're left on a on a desert island forced to start again from scratch um and then you start uh, getting you start building a few houses getting getting farmers to come and then you can rear sheep and pigs, and then as you as you progress your little village, you then get workers who it, it, it mirrors the industrial revolution basically being set in the eighteen hundreds as well. Um, so you start off with the farmers, like I say, and then you build onto workers, and then these are the ones that are doing all the industrialization aspect of things as well. Um, but yeah, the story is really good. The gameplay is really good. The way that it looks, it looks brilliant. There's a there's a thing that you can do f- from the, the the settings menu to look at postcard view, and then you can just like fly over what you've created so far, and it looks brilliant. Um, the attention to detail has always been one of the things that I've enjoyed about the Anno series, and I've always been quite jealous that it's been PC only. Mm. Um, but it looks it looks really good on the the a Series X. I don't think it's on Xbox One. It's just Series X, this, yeah. but it looks looks all the better for it. I'm just at a point now where I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit stuck. So for some reason, um, all my farmers and workers have started deserting my island. <laughs> uh, Was you have, something you, you have, said, Richard? <laughs> well, <laughs> technically, yeah. So you have a, um, an, a, a newspaper that comes out every so often, and you can choose to change the wording of it to increase um morale and stuff but i thought you know what morale's pretty high <laughs> i don't feel like i need to <laughs> and uh people have people haven't been happy they started oh. leaving in droves oh, that's horrible which then happens. just has a knock-on effect on everything yeah. else but uh i need to re- re- i need to fix that sooner rather than later it's so yeah de- really good so depressing when it happens in sims and something they just turn <laughs> yeah yeah Great, I want to look forward to it. I really like the look of that. That's Ubisoft as well. An Ubisoft game. It's come on time and it's okay. Yeah, it's it's weird for them though because they've just uh, indefinitely delayed Settlers, which 
isn't a million oh, miles away from no, from that sorry. sort of game as well. Yeah. I think that was due out this week. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Some good games then from all of us. I think we've all had a good time. We've we played some good stuff. Um, right. Let's talk about some news. Um, we're gonna, it's all games this this week. I'm afraid for people who don't like games and <laughs> like um, <laughs> just here for the cabling. And up ladders. Just here for the cable in and live tape. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, I think the first one I'm going to start, I'm going to just talk about Redfall, really. It's in- interesting because um, I think a lot of sites, not us, unfortunately, have had some hands on, like a 90 minutes on, on Redfall. And they've been playing it and putting their thoughts, and it's very positive. People have really been liking Redfall, but people are really, really, really liking Redfall. What they've played and they said how it's like an open world experience much much different from what this company's done like with dishonored or something and where you're you, you can do some stealth but you're mixing stealth and action and there's a lot more story there than they thought it was going to be so it supports a single player, which is quite interesting um and the redfall developers said that they because it's just the idea that it's going to be online always on but actually they've responded to what people were very angry about that and annoyed that they're trying to work on a fix or reverse that somehow um, by using a save button. So they're on that. So it's the idea that you don't have to be connected to the internet all the time while playing it. So yeah, that was good. Looking forward to that game more now. Now I've read those. I was a bit. Mm. I wasn't. I didn't get that excited about it, but now I am. Yeah. Mm. Um, yes. Now, Paul, hello. You've got something that's annoyed you this week, have you? Um, I have got something that's annoyed me this week, and uh, surprisingly, it's EA, everyone's favourite uh, nasty uncle in the gaming world. Um, basically, they're shutting down some Battlefield games, including the greatest Battlefield game ever made, Battlefield Bad Company 2. They're closing the servers for Battlefield 1943, Battlefield Bad Company, and Bad Company 2. And they're going to turn them off in December, I believe, and then delist them from the store. Is that right? I think, I think so, that, yeah. 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 Mm. And, yeah. you know, that makes me sad, to be honest. I mean, they're still pushing. They're still flogging the dead horse that's Battlefield 2042. <laughs> and they're going to turn off Bad Company 2, which is, without any doubt, the best Battlefield game I have ever played. I mean, where's Battlefield Bad Company 3? That's what I want. Um, but, yeah, so if you are a fan of Bad Company 2 like me, and if not, why not? Um, you need to get online and play before December when EA are going to flip the switch and turn it off. When was the last so, time you were on there? Uh, about a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going back to it. I Dude, love it. Dude, so you're going back. Ah, that's I, good. I finished the game way back on the xbox 360 i got all of the achievements and i think i'm missing i'm missing three achievements i think from the uh from the vietnam expansion that they did and yeah it's it's still a brilliant multiplayer shooter the even today so yeah um get on there and play it is my advice because soon you won't be able to it's hard isn't it because i'm gonna be devil's advocate here is how long oh, do you, that's not like you. How long do you, do you how long do you keep those games going for? Because it's forever. If it's a game I like, <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> but servers, uh, you know, expensive, and it's after a while they must just go. There's not enough. There's not enough to be people. Fair, it's only Paul this, playing this it. Quite a long time. <laughs> This is quite a long time for a year game to still have its servers on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it released in 2010. Bad Company Two. Right. Um, it, it was one of the first games that I got for my Xbox 360. Um, my parents came to visit on, on my birthday in 2010 and bought it for me as oh. a birthday present. And I went online and I just loved it, fell in love with the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, it's I have a lot of very good memories. I think I've even written a piece for the site about looking back to Bad Company 2 and why it was the best of all the battlefields. Um, so, yeah, there you go. This this makes me sad. Very sad. I feel sad now. I mean, yeah. I wasn't... So if, you, if you're listening, EA, reconsider it. I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they listen. <laughs> uh, um, they were going to do Mirror's Edge as well, the first one, but they're not. 
Yeah, they've to, changed the yeah, mind changed on that one. They're going yeah. to keep that. Well, that was only a single player game, yeah, it was, so yeah. it seemed daft to do with that, you know. But yeah, so anyway, there yeah. we go. Okay. I, think, I think that only had uh, online leaderboards to worry about oh, for Mirror's yeah, Edge. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Wow. Um, Richard, you, you see something made you happy. What is it? I saw something that pleasantly surprised me. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so the Crash Team Rumble game got announced in December. Um, and I was like, hmm, I'm umming and ahhing about it. And then, uh, and then I read this week that it's going to be a MOBA game, so a multiplayer online battle arena, something like that. And then I was really put off by it. But then I watched the gameplay of it, and I was like, hmm, it doesn't look too bad, actually. I think what they've done is quite clever, that they've managed to retain the basic Crash Bandicoot gameplay of collecting Wumpa Fruits and smashing crates and applied that to a, a multiplayer battle arena scenario. Um, so the gameplay that I saw was focused around just the one level uh, where both teams had to collect. It was the first to collect, I think it was about 2,000 Wumpa Fruit. So you were running around this level, mm. collecting them all, smashing the crates, but uh, each character obviously has their own abilities. So Crash is just spinning everyone and double jumping and everything and then cortex has got um his gun that i think he had in crash bandicoot 4 um and just th things like that it's, uh, um and i think the price is going to be under 30 pounds as well which was another plus point it's not going to be a full retail p price title but yeah, i was pleasantly surprised by what i saw in it and it got me a little bit more excited for this game because I'm a big fan. I'm a big Crash fan. Yeah. Um, the Crash Four was a little bit disappointing. Um, the Insane trilogy proved that the first three Crash games will always be the best ones. Um, but this this one looks uh, a little bit different. Like it's not it's not the first uh, multiplayer game in the Crash Bandicoot series by any means, but um, something a bit different whilst retaining the core Crash elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks all right. Yeah, I can't see me playing this, but I think <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm with you on this. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a Richard review yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just really quickly, the uh, well, we've got, we've got a bit of time. I don't know what I'm saying quickly. Um, we've got loads. Of time. The, uh, one of the actors who plays Venom in Spider-Man Two, the PlayStation game, is sort of like hilariously and <laughs> did a tweet. It sounded like he was on a plane going back going. Um, in the, you know, it's coming out in September. We've got loads of promotion going on in August. It's going to be mad. Uh, all the adverts are coming out in that time. And then he had to. He did another tweet later on from his sort of like in a swimming pool, going, "I was quite dread lagged. Um, <laughs> I think I might be villain myself," which is very funny. But obviously, got told off. But it, it's just been a kind of rumor for a while that it would be September. Um, what I like about the September thing. If it is there, it's great having those two big hitters from PlayStation and from Xbox, Starfield, head to head in September, which is fun, I think. It does feel like, do you think that might be, a, it could be a date there that's a possible, Richard? What do you think? It'd be interesting if it's, I hope it's the same day. Oh, I really do. Great if it was the same day, yeah. It'd be like Blur versus Oasis. <laughs> yeah. It'd be really good, wouldn't it, to see that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they did. I think when the, the, the first one came out, it was in September. Um, so, yeah, that, it does probably sound quite likely. Fun, though. Fun if you've got both. Yeah, two big games there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask Paul what he thinks at all about this. Um, <laughs> he still can't get God of War to work. I, I still can't. Oh, no. God. I, I, and then I thought, shall I get Spider-Man and see? If, and then I thought, well, what if that doesn't play? I know. Um, I haven't turned the PlayStation on for, well, since we spoke about God of War last, to be honest. <laughs> it's just that under the telly gathering dust. Oh, so. There you go. Um, I'm going to talk about, I don't know if you two saw it, but um, Lies of Pi. I, I always say Life of no, Pi. Lies of Pi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, is it Pi? Yeah. yeah, there's no boats and tigers in this game. <laughs> okay. Lies of Pi. Yes, great. Um, that's, um, I think that's coming out in August. We haven't got a specific date, but I think it's August. It's coming to Game Pass. Um, they did a sort of like this uh, on YouTube. You can find a sort of eleven minute mm. bit of gameplay that um, it's got. It's it has it's got no thrills. It literally is eleven minutes of someone playing. It looks like, um, yeah. 
What do we think? Paul, you're a big uh, Simon's fan. I thought it was very good. Did Immediately, you? I thought, this is not a game for Gareth. Um, you know, so <laughs> obviously I'm going to have to do the review for this one. Somebody's got to step up to the plate. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody who's finished Elden Ring, say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, the the gameplay, it looks very Dark Souls-y. Mm. Um, it looks quite impressive i was you know for for an early i'm assuming it's an early build since it's not out for a while yet mm. um it looked impressively solid the action looked quite good it was it was nothing surprising let's put it that way um but it looked like it'll be competent um that's my problem rather with it. than wildly exciting. yeah that's the problem with it it's i think for me it's just like yeah exactly that it looks it looks competent. It looks like you know mm. there's nothing surprising there. I wanted something surprising, but maybe like you said, it's is it an early build? Um, you know, it's a bit of a weird thing to show. Like eleven minutes of basically fighting with <laughs> with no music. There was no mm. music in yeah. there at all. It's like <laughs> this is just weird. Why would you release this? Um, Richard, did you ever look at it? Uh, I, not I, this new one. No, uh, I'm not really that keen on it to be honest yeah. even as someone that likes likes a, a hardcore rpg this one just hasn't grabbed me also it's very you're sort of like you this character is, is fighting kind of like not like bosses just like normal characters on its way and it's hardly taking any health off it <laughs> it's mm. like wow this is this is quite hard um, um, it, yes it, it did look like i mean the first guy that he fought he seemed to take an age to defeat yeah him. Yeah. And it just looked like a regular boss, yeah. a regular, yeah, regular kind of yeah. character. When you meet on the way, that's I a know. bit weird. I, yeah. I was heartened to see the sort of stealthy approach paid dividends, though. Yeah. That you could sneak up behind yeah. them and sort of finish them off yeah. in two hits, which was quite good. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's one to watch, but it needs to, it needs to be a bit more exciting, a bit mm. more sort of wow factor. You need some music in there. Because obviously it's going to have music in there rather than just in there. Um, <laughs> Chaz and Dave, if that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, Chaz and Dave, that would be good. Get Chaz and Dave over it. Yeah, rabbit, rabbit. Over that, yeah. Uh, great. Um, good. We, we're zooming through the news. Um, Counter-Strike 2 has been announced suddenly from Valve, like they have to do is coming out in summer. Um, anyone Counter-Strike fans here? I think I must be the only person in the world who's never played Counter-Strike. No, no, there's two of us. Yeah, all okay. right, cool. Uh, yeah, so it's all you, Gareth. You're I think I, on these, I think the I played it. I played this. Shooters. I played this on the Xbox. Was it? Oh no, that was Dead Fortress. No, I haven't played it. So there you go. That's coming out uh, in the summer. So people are very excited about that. Um, but it'll never. That'll be it now. It'll never get a third game because that's that's not what Valve are no, about. No, they don't. They don't care about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Um, other thing, I was just watching before we came on this Thursday, there was a, um, a state of the Unreal, an Unreal Engine kind of conference, which is, uh, it's not, not it's not like the Xbox <laughs> or the PlayStation what conference, it's quite dry, as we've seen before, but what they show is great, I mean, it's worth having a look, but the two things I got from that, which are sort of like the biggest thing, which is the Project M which is James's one of James's games he looks so the gameplay was, was a reveal the reveal of kind of like the visuals of course but there's just the gameplay and you worked out what that game is and it's it it feels like it's a, um, a quantic dream kind of game is that right they're kind of like you're making choices like um hard, is it quantic dream I'm thinking of the company that do hard rain and yeah yeah that kind of thing when you're like if you're facing that way it's like go left or go right or pick up your gun or hide you know it's that kind of rather than you being a truly immersive bit of gameplay that's what it feels like there did you two have a look at this um no we're, we're not on the same mailing list as you oh, yeah, good, yeah. Um, um, you know you get all the, the dry <laughs> boring stuff we get to uh like fall off ladders and stuff so exactly <laughs> um the other one was lords of the fallen which had a bit of a showcase of the lighting and the, the look of that. It does look, that game looks amazing, actually. It's also the Fallen, I think it's 2, isn't it? That does look. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, it's not. A, it's just called Lords of the Fallen, isn't it? Yeah. But it's it not, it's not a remake of the first game. No, it does It's, look, it's yeah. another entry in the series. If you get a chance. I'm, I'm cautiously excited. Yeah, about have it. a look at that. It looks amazing. It does look absolutely amazing. There's a bit of um, um, Hellblade 2 as well, a little bit of 
just the technical stuff of that. Yeah, that's quite exciting. And lastly, to just talk about really briefly, um, Ubisoft is developing a tool that aims to support script writers. So basically, this is kind of AI script writing tool where it will possibly write some of the NPC stuff as they go. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's now put the writers up in arms and then they just go, no, this isn't what it's for. It's going to be an aid to work with writers. It would, be, it would help the process rather than just taking over from writers. What do we think you got from that thing? Do you think it's a good idea that AI will start writing stuff for you? I think if it's going to be for like incidental dialogue, so, so if you're walking past a group of people and you hear the, I don't know, a sentence or two, hmm. I think that I have no issue with that. I don't think it's going to... I think it would still need to be reviewed, obviously. Mm, mm. But I think if you if you can just input that and say, like, there's a group of people on a beach, give them three lines to say as you walk past or whatever, then, then yeah, it's, it's... It surely can be a beneficial tool long-term if, if a scriptwriter doesn't have to write lines of dialogue for stuff that a player might never experience. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah, but is it just a cost cutting measure? Then is it just because they're thinking, why should we pay a bloke to sit there and or or a woman? Sorry, not wanting to be misogynist. Um, so why should I pay somebody to sit there and write this dialogue when I can get this AI tool to do it? Is it going to put people out of work? Ah, but then you could have yes, actual script writers spend more time on Beyond Good and Evil Two and, and actually get it out the door. That's never coming. <laughs> they will be when this AI tool's developed. <laughs> I think you... Apparently, next they're going to start doing an AI tool to write reviews, and then we'll all be out of the <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure I've seen that review somewhere this week. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. It's an interesting one. I think, I think you're right. I think you're both right, which is good. Which is very nice. You both did those arguments beautifully is, is on both that sides. It's comfortable, Gary. Yeah, it was good. Well, you both summed up. I think it is good. I think Richard's right about you need someone to probably. But I think there's something very interesting about, you know, when you play an open world game, you will get to a point when you've walked past an NPC all the time. You've got, I've heard that line of dialogue a thousand yeah. times before. So it's about. I used, to, I used to be an adventurer, but then I took an arrow to the <laughs> Yeah, new. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you can have a thing when they're, they're never doing that or the AI is kind of working out, actually, I can't. I've, we've used that bit. We've used that before. It needs to be something else, and they can just have. They can literally at the time just have things that you can say that res- maybe are also responding to what's going on. I don't know. That's something quite exciting. Mm. If it's like just the odd couple of words, yeah, there's something interesting about it. Um, but it, it needs to, need to be, of course, everything needs to be tested. They're not going to just put it out there. Let's see what the AI does. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take over the world, Gareth. Have you not seen Terminator? <laughs> I have. I get worried all the time. I see my tweets when I keep tweeting about robots doing somersaults. I'm worried every moment. Um, right. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, now, what are we looking forward to do next week? Let's start with Richard. What have we got, Richard? The two that I've put down. Uh, so, if hopefully, I'm back. Might be back on the podcast next week. Mm. Uh, but these two were happening after that, so. Um, I can mention them, but I'll have to mention them again next week. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I'm still looking forward to. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dick and Dom uh, are doing a tour for the bungalow. <laughs> Twenty years of Dick and Dom in the bungalow, and I've got tickets to that. Great. Very excited. <laughs> I used to love that as a kid. Hang on, and then hang on. what? Dick and Dom are doing a tour. Yeah, you remember Dick and Dom in the bungalow. I Sean. do remember Dick and Dom in the bungalow, but you know you have to remember I'm probably twenty years older than you. So at the time they were just two annoying idiots on the telly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're still the same, but they're doing Excellent. a tour where it's on stage and they've got uh, the bungalow heads are uh, audience participants now. Um, I haven't put my name down for it though. <laughs> I would rather watch than be involved. Well, it's not for us. It has to be someone like Bill and Ben. I, yeah, yeah Bill, Bill and Ben in the garden shed. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Watch, watch with mother <laughs> on tour. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite as old as you uh, yet, Gareth. Ah, uh, good. Right, Paul, what are you looking forward to next week? Well, as I may have mentioned before, it's my fiftieth birthday 
on the 23rd, so tomorrow as we record this. Um, so I'm looking forward to spending a day sort of weeping gently in the corner as everything falls to pieces. Um, I think that's pretty much what happens when you turn 50 in it, Gareth. It does, yeah. Bit of yeah, weeping. excellent. Look forward to that. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the big switch over at work onto the new system on Saturday. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, as we like to call it in pre our pre-podcast, the post-apocalyptic. Yes, exactly. It's, it, it's either going to be a, a, a storming success or it's going to be a raging failure. There's no middle ground. The start of um, end times. Exactly. <laughs> the herald. Next time I'm on the podcast, if I'm saying, yes, I'm now unemployed, you'll know why. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, other than that, it's 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 all downhill from here, I feel. Really? so. Oh, dear me. Um, Game-wise, Resi 4, I think I might get it on Friday. Um, I fancy it now. Um, and we will do a bit of this next week, and you, you people have to do some research next week, because future game shows on probably today, as you'll listen to this, um, it's on the 23rd on Paul's birthday night. You don't have to watch it. Hey! Um, it's, uh, <laughs> but there's lots of new games in there, I think, and other games. So I think we'll cover that next week, I think. It'll be a good thing to cover. So we'll come back with more details about that next week. Um, but for now, if we need to get hold of you, where do we get hold of you, Richard? I'm on Twitter and Instagram. My handle is at Dobbo1912. Paul, where can we get you? I am also on the Twitter, and if you want to, uh, I'm going to steal Darren's phrase, if you want to grab my handle, it's uh, at Xbox Hub Paul. Oh, Darren, 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 Darren. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to find me at GB Variety on Twitter and Twitch, but for now, gentlemen, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook. 